Hey YouTube, it's Elevated. Um, finally coming at you with Levet 101. Uh, I'm about a week, week and a half late, so I'm just gonna jump right to it. If you don't know who Levet is, I'll link her, uh, her channel and her other channel, Celestial Voyages, in the description, along with a really nice playlist from Inside 33. Uh, Levet studies something close to uh, sidereal astrology, which is different from traditional Western astrology. Uh, which is actually based on an inaccurate system. If you look up Western astrology, the way they calculate the positions of the zodiac uh, doesn't line up with the constellation's actual positions in real time. And because of that, a lot of people have been duped into thinking they're certain signs when they're not. The way we calculate the dates that zodiacs land on, uh, they're probably about a month, or a half, sorry, about a half a month off, and like maybe 15 to 20 days-ish. So uh, half of you are still in the correct sign, whereas the other half of you think you're on a different sign, which really affects your understanding of astrology, which is really not, um, <clears throat> if your basic understanding of astrology is like reading the newspaper, like the daily uh, horoscope or uh, <laughs> horror, horror scope is what that likes to call it. It's really not like that. I think someone else said it, I can't remember who it was, but they said it pretty succinctly. Um, astrology is more like reading weather charts. It's going to be the basic meteorology of the flow of human collective unconscious. But it's not going to be like individually specific. Like your individual phase is not going to be written in the stars. And this isn't going to be like some pop psychology, MBTI, uh, personality type thing. It's more about like the Jungian psychology of like the archetypes and Joseph Campbell's understandings of the dynamics of like collective unconscious. All right, with that said, let's just jump right into it. Uh, we're gonna start off by explaining the uh, symmetries of the zodiac wheel that you normally see. Um, it actually lined it up specifically with Aquarius and Capricorn at the top, and uh, you'll see why it's, but it's to better lay out all of these symmetries. Normally you see it with Capricorn uh, starting off, or maybe even Sagittarius, because they like to make Jupiter, uh, the god of this age, god with a capital G, but, uh, more on that later. Mm. So there's 12 zodiac signs, and each one is ruled by one of the seven of what we call moving stars. There's the sun and the moon, and then five of the visible planets, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. So even though the sun is the only one which is an actual star, the planets, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, they still reflected enough light to look like stars. And they all travel on this plane of our solar systems. Our, our solar system lies on a flat plane where all the orbits pretty much line up and go around. Whereas all the other stars in the night sky pretty much stay fixed. So when you're looking at it from Earth being the center and watching all these other uh, moving stars, the sun and the moon and Mercury, Venus and all that go around, uh, because it's on that flat plane, they're always gonna stay in line with these constellations. And these constellations are what make up the zodiac. Now each constellation is ruled by one of the seven moving stars. And actually, apart from the sun and the moon, who rule, um, who only rule one constellation, all the planets rule two constellations. So Saturn rules Aquarius and Capricorn. Jupiter rules Pisces and Sagittarius, Mars rules Aries, and Scorpio, Venus, Taurus, and Libra, Mercury, Gemini, and Virgo. And that's why I laid it out like this, so you can see that. Um, now along with the wheel, each constellation also has a masculine or feminine designation. And each ruling planet will rule one masculine, Saturn, masculine, Aquarius, and one feminine, Saturn, feminine, Capricorn. And as you go along the wheel, it always cycles between masculine, feminine, masculine, feminine, masculine, feminine. And 
And then you have the four elements, of course, um, water, earth, air, and fire. And they actually go in this cycle, air, earth, fire, water, air, earth, fire, water, air, earth, fire, water. If you'll notice, um, earth is always feminine along with water. Feminine earth. And then that makes air and fire masculine. Masculine. Fire is always masculine, air is always masculine. Masculine fire is usually associated with um, emotion, anger, and war. Whereas masculine air is kind of associated with like thought philosophy, ideology, uh, uh, higher self, and stuff like that. Air can also be translated into heaven. You know, think of like the word of God. But God speaks with air. Um, feminine earth has to do with harvesting, farming, like mother nature. And feminine water kind of represents the same thing, but uh, with ocean and fish symbolism. Uh, it also can re represent fertility. Uh, water also represents people and groupthink. And now for the final piece, there's actually three crosses, and you'll see them designated right here. Uh, so you have the fixed cross, which is colored in, Right here, and they're actually all at right angles to each other if you look at it like that. So you have Taurus and Scorpio. Notice how they're both feminine. That makes this the feminine fixed axis. And then you have Leo and Aquarius masculine fixed axis. Also, look at how the cross, the fixed cross has one of each element. Air, water, fire, earth. It's the same with the other two crosses as well. You have the mutable cross with um, Feminine water Pisces, feminine earth, Virgo, masculine fire, Sagittarius, and masculine air, Gemini. And finally, we have the cardinal cross, the masculine axis with fire Aries. And air Libra. And the feminine axis with Earth Capricorn and water Cancer. So, what does this all mean? Um, <clears throat> There's a lot of interpretation and symbolism that goes into all this. You'll often hear a lot, we're in the age of Pisces and we're going into the age of Aquarius. Well, what does that mean? Astrologically, the age that we're in is shown by what constellation the sun appears during the vernal equinox. So there's a, a vernal equinox and the autumnal equinox. And those are the days where the day and the night are equally divided. So the vernal equinox is in the spring, the autumnal equinox is in the fall. Those two along with the uh, solstices, the summer solstice and the winter solstice, uh, pretty much uh, divide the seasons. So summer solstice is right in the middle of summer, it's the longest day. Uh, the winter solstice is right in the middle of the winter, it's the longest night. Uh, the vernal equinox is in the middle of spring, the autumnal equinox is in the middle of fall. 
Well, yeah. So the age that we're in is whatever age, or sorry, whatever constellation the sun falls in during the vernal equinox. So we are in the age of Pisces. And usually, uh, depending on the uh, size of the actual constellation in the sky, uh, these ages can vary. They usually vary around every 2,000 years or so, give or take. And like I said earlier, this is kind of like reading weather charts of the collective unconscious of humanity. So let's circle all the way back to about 10,000 BC in the age of Leo. Not a lot of information is known about this age. It's about the earliest humanity has been keeping records. Uh, it's all, it's synonymous with the dawn of humanity. Uh, notice that the sun is in, uh, ruling this age. And actually, uh, one, th one interesting thing about this age that we do know is that a lot of ice melted, a lot of like a deglaciation, they call it. Uh, it ultimately resulted in a 300 foot rise in sea levels in this age. And so that lasted from about 10,000 BC to about 8,000 BC when we moved into the age of Cancer. This is ruled by the feminine moon and marks the beginning of civilization with like agriculture and domestication of livestock. The age of Gemini, 6,000 BC, ruled by Mercury, who has a lot to do with commerce, navigation, and communication. This is when civilizations started trading between each other. Uh, then we go into Taurus, the age of the bull. This is where a lot of bull worship and golden calf worship comes from. And this is actually where, um, in the Bible, we go to the age of Aries, uh, which is Old Testament. It's masculine fire, which has to do with action. But Aries specifically has to do with war. Um, Mars also rules our root chakra, so it's very fierce. This is uh, also the age of Moses. Uh, the rod of iron or yeah this is uh this is where you get the wrath of god this is the god who smites uh, god smite the people who worshiped bull idols because that was in an old that was from an old age uh where you're in a new age now this uh the age of aries masculine fire so worshiping a false idol is a punishment. This is where a lot of smiting happens. Um, and then we go into the age of Pisces, which is known as the age of mercy. Uh, 1 AD, so this is New Testament. This is when Jesus comes in and Jupiter rules religion. So this is where a lot of religion comes into play here. Think like Jesus fish, here in the water symbolism. Uh, teach a man to fish, things like that. It's also a water sign, so apart from the fertility and feasting, kind of like how Jesus fed the masses with just bread and fish. Um, the water sign also has to do with people. So when you read the Bible and a verse says something comes up out of the waters, that, that might have to do with uh, like coming up or coming forth out of the people or the masses of men. Uh, this is also where groupthink happens. This is where the collective unconscious is uh, very prevalent, I should say. So this is the age we're currently in right now. And notice that it's also on the mutable cross. So everything's also very unstable. Life right now, especially now, as it's vamping up to the end of this age. Uh, we're going from a mutable to a fixed age. So everything's kind of like wet cement here. It's hardening, but there's still time to move it around. That's why it feels like everything is moving uh, even more now as we get to the end of the age because it's like a desperate last attempt to change things before they become fixed. <sighs> and leading with that, we're going to move right along to and get more in depth into the crosses. So again, we have the mutable fixed and the cardinal cross. And this is the way they lay that. Like I said, we're in the age of Pisces, which is the age of mercy. We're on the mutable cross, the adept, 
as opposed to like the master or the grandmaster. Um, this is the cross of change. This is the liquid. Um, then you have the fixed cross. This is like solid. It's the master. And finally, the cardinal cross, the grand master, the noble gas. Notice how these two have a top, a head. Whereas the mutable cross has no ruler, it's mutable. It's dual ruled by Gemini or Mercury and Pisces or Jupiter. Jupiter and Mercury, by the way, only rule on the mutable cross. Fixed cross and cardinal cross have, you know, like the Sun, Moon, Venus, Mars, and Saturn. Mutable cross um, Another thing about it is because you get a lot of liquid change uh, Especially in, in the age of Pisces Jupiter because Jupiter also Has to do with like lies and confusion you get a lot of what Levet calls uh, the scribes scribbling the scriptures to make the Bible Bibble Babble, or Babylon. Uh, this is also where the Tower of Babel comes into play. <sighs> and this is uh, reading the Bible, man. Uh, now I can, I can stumble through Shakespeare. I like reading Oscar Wilde and like Arthur Conan Doyle and like. Old English isn't much, uh, ye, ye oldy English isn't much of a problem for me. Um, but the way the Bible is translated, it's like, it's like trying to read a kid, kindergartner's like crown scribbles. And I think part of that comes from us being an immutable age. I feel like um, a lot of Jesus' teachings have been perverted. Uh, this false idol of Jesus. Jesus is also Theseus' son of Zeus, who is Jupiter. Or Jew Peter. You know, the uh, this is the, the Jesus who said you, you should renounce all your worldly possessions, but don't forget to celebrate my birthday with rampant consumerism. This is the Jesus who said murder is a sin unless you're fighting in war, right? <laughs> and like, in this age, like even... Uh, even, like, overall teachings we hear about, like, all stories, uh, have been perverted, like, Cinderella, who needs to be rescued by a charming prince, but when is the princess ever able to rescue herself, you know? Like, she couldn't have the, uh, agency to get up and leave. Um, this has to do with the Virgo, uh, who's ruled by Mercury, who's also closely related to Loki, the trickster god. So it's like the damsel in distress. So you also have stories like olive oil from Popeye. It's always played as uh, Popeye being the good guy and Brutus being the bad guy, but they're both like lower chakra, airy style, uh, rod of war men. And the virtue lies in olive oil not being rescued by Popeye every time.
but by realizing she doesn't need either man. Like Jesus really said, salvation comes from within. But remember, Jupiter rules this age. Dual rules this cross with Mercury. And they're taking advantage of Aries, the root chakra, Mars. So you have the church making money off of war. The three sovereign city-states, uh, the Vatican in Rome, London, and Washington, D.C., are all plotting together this age. They kind of like twisted Jesus's teachings and really all of the teachings we have. Uh, another interesting to, thing to note is we're also in the age of Pisces which is supposed to be feminine, but we're ruled under a patriarchy. Orange is a new black, remember? Uh, orange is made up of red and yellow. Red is air. I'll write that right here. And yellow is fire. They'll try to switch that up too. Uh, but if you look into like the Native American medicine wheel, red is air, yellow is fire, white is water, and black is earth. So yeah, orange is a new black. Again, age of Pisces, feminine. Orange, masculine, is a new black, feminine. Um, another thing to point out about this age, uh, Trump. <laughs> oh man, Trump is a Gemini. And like Mercury, he's very, very two-faced. Uh, I've never seen so many people with, like, so wildly opposite opinions of the same person, but it is what it is. Uh, I just, I believe Trump is another distraction, like Douglas Adams wrote. Uh, the president is very much a figurehead. He wields no real power whatsoever. He's apparently chosen by the government, but the qualities he is required to display are not those of leadership, but those of finely judged outrage. For this reason, the president is always a controversial choice, always an infuriating but fascinating character. His job is not to wield power, but to draw attention away from it. So yeah, that's the age we're in. But we are moving into the age of Aquarius, which is not only on the fixed cross, but he actually leads the fixed cross. He's also ruled by Saturn. Also. Notice how Saturn rules Capricorn and Aquarius. Saturn is the only planet to rule two consecutive ages. This is what Levet calls the age with no end. Um. Saturn is also the only one to lead two out of the three crosses. Um, they try to confuse you and say like Saturn is Satan and Jupiter is God. When Jupiter is working with the trickster to fool you, to confuse you. God works in mysterious ways, but the devil is a cunning fucker. That's why you see many religions of today with conflicting morals. God, the supposed God of mercy, hates gays, stuff like that. 
Anyways, this fixed cross should look familiar. We have Scorpio, which everybody knows is Scorpion. Sorry, Scorpio is a scorpion. It's actually an Egyptian interpretation, uh, but in Persian, he's an eagle. Uh, Libra, uh, the scales, uh, Lib another um, symbol of Libra is also the snake, and I'll get more into that later. Leo, the lion is Babylonian. Cancer, the crab, in Egyptian, he's actually a scarab. Gemini, the twins, I think that one's a little bit ubiquitous. Taurus, the bull, but he can also be an ox. And Aries, the ram. Which can also be seen as the lamb. That's why there's a lot of lamb sacrifice in relation to Jesus, or the supposed Jesus, as the Lamb of God. Uh, so going back to the fixed cross, anyways, we have uh, the man, the lion, the eagle, and the ox. And you've probably seen this cross before. I know this one's just more prevalent in pop culture than either of these two, really. You probably barely ever hear about these two, but this one you definitely hear about. Specifically in the Bible, you have Ezekiel 110 uh, with the four creatures, each with four faces of the ox, eagle, lion, man leading God's throne chariot. Then you also have Revelation 4 7 with the classic four creatures, man, lion, to uh, eagle, and ox. Uh, they, these creatures surround God's heavenly throne. The Bible also has four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which all correspond to this cross. And there's always different interpretations as to who represents what. One I commonly see is the eagle representing the word of God, and Aquarius representing man. Even though Aquarius is an air sign or a heaven sign, remember air also means heaven. But that's just another issue of us being an immutable age. Nothing we know, everything's, everything's out of whack. We don't know what's going on. Okay, so Age of Aquarius is ruled by Saturn. So we're going from the Age of Mercy. We have this age, the Age of the Law of Equivalent Exchange, the Law of Karma. You reap what you sow. And then we flow into the Age of Capricorn's Grand Master. Cardinal cross. Capri means apex, like a caprice, and corn, like cornucopia, means horn. So Capricorn is the most high horn. This is like bringing heaven on earth. That's how these two work together. Capricorn being an earth sign also has to do with creation. And notice Cancer, a water sign, and the, has to do with the moon, also has to do with flood and destruction. Uh, it'd be really interesting to find out like the great flood uh, happened in the age of Cancer, which would have been 8,000 to 6,000 BC. <clears throat> That'd be really interesting to find out. Which would actually line up with uh, Leo this age with all the ice melting. And all of a sudden you'd have a lot more water available to flood. Mm, but that's all speculative. Again, age of Pisces, mutable cross, we don't know. <sighs> Anyways, you have Aries on the left with the two horns, 
and then Libra with the two scales. Aries, the rod of iron, the god of war, balanced with Libra, the scales of justice. Also notice that uh, the mutable cross, by the way, has no ruling axis. The fixed cross is ruled by Aquarius air, so it's ruled by the masculine axis. Air, masculine, fire, masculine. This is their feminine axis. This is their feminine axis. The age of Capricorn, this one is ruled by the feminine axis. Capricorn sits at the top. That's another thing to point out. <clears throat> Moving on, I want to actually dive into the chakra system. So you have Mars ruling the root chakra. Aries is action. The mass is going to cardinal fire. So the root chakra is I am. And these are all like two word of what the chakras are. I am, I feel, I do, I love, I speak, I understand. That's basically what the chakras are. Um, so Mars rules war and emotion. Then you have Jupiter ruling the sacral chakra. Uh, this is where sexuality comes in. Uh, which I guess would be Sagittarius. Sexuality. And then religion would be like Pisces. With this one, Aries would be war, Scorpio would be emotion. But yeah, Jupiter, sacral chakra. It's like sexual, I feel. Religious, I feel. A lot of times I try to place Jupiter at the top. Remember, they're trying to make Jupiter the, the god, capital G. Because Jupiter also rules religion as well. But that doesn't work, and you'll see why. Uh, then you have the sun and the moon dual ruling the solar plexus chakra. So each chakra is ruled by two uh, zodiac signs. It's ruled by one planet except for the solar plexus. The solar plexus is dual ruled by the sun and the moon because each of these only rule one constellation. So these are your lower chakras, your root, your sacral, your solar plexus. Notice, fire, water, fire, water, fire, water. This is why Jupiter cannot be the third eye chakra or anything else. These are lower chakras. Then you have three higher chakras, earth and air, earth and air, earth and air. And the seventh chakra that you normally hear about, it's not a chakra actually. It's only activated when you activate all of these, kind of like a reverse prism. A white light will only appear if you have all, all of the colors come in before it. So Venus obviously rules the heart chakra. Uh, which is, I love, kind of self-explanatory. I love or I will. Taurus is a very I will type. One, two. Uh, Mercury. Uh, remember, Mercury has to do with communication. Uh, so it rules the throat chakra, I speak. And Saturn rules the third eye. The chakra of understanding. Saturn, interesting enough, also known as Kronos, represents time. And there's an interesting notion I found on YouTube about, um, man, say what you want about the quality of YouTube comments or internet comments in general, you can find some real gold if you just look. <laughs> 
Anyways, uh, this guy named Steven Schmidt wrote on what I think is a video from the channel of Academy Ideas. Uh, another great channel, I'll link in the description. Anyways, he looks at the seven deadly sins and their corresponding virtues and says, The sins are all as you would describe binary, i.e. stimulus and response. They all come naturally without consciousness. Conversely, the virtues would all be considered three-step or requiring thought that is outside of time. So, lust versus chastity, gluttony versus temperance, greed versus charity, sloth versus diligence, wrath versus patience, envy versus gratitude, and pride versus humility. So this isn't really from Levet's teachings. Um, this is more of my own understandings. Uh, I just try to relate them to the planets and chakras. And as you can see, some of them might have multiple relations. So wrath could have been very well been like a Mars root chakra. <sighs> um, like greed was very hard between like Mercury, Venus, and Mars. And so like you, th there's ways that these all work together. Um, another thing, like I said earlier, Jupiter, Mars, and Mercury are all working together. There's a lot of symbol, uh, symbolism of serpents. Obviously, you have the evil one in the Garden of Eden. <clears throat> but you also have, like, the snake of uh, Moses' staff or Merlin's staff. In one of those, you have the snake of medicine. You also have the snake coming out of the third eye on the Egyptian pharaohs and, like, the kundalini snakes. The snake, which generally represents knowledge or wisdom, has duality, just like a lot of other things in this world. The bad kundalini snake tells you to activate your chakra system or to open your third eye by starting at the root. But that only keeps you bound to the lower chakras. Jesus said, I am the way. No one gets to the Father except through me. And how do you do that? By accepting Jesus in your heart. By allowing Jesus into your heart through the heart chakra. That's the real way to open up the third eye, not the kundalini start from the root way. Uh, Jesus also said there will be a time when you no longer need the sun and the moon, for I am with you. And that actually goes back to this so uh you would have solar astrology which actually starts with sagittarius and leads up to leo the age of the sun and then lunar astrology which starts with the age of cancer and the moon and ends with the age of pisces and that's where it comes back to is um uh, you will no longer need to look at the sun or the moon. You will no longer need the sun or the moon. You will no longer need solar astrology or lunar astrology. You won't need any of it because I am with you. Saturn will be ruling this age. God will be present. Um, so yeah. Okay, so now you wanna do some astrology. Uh, you want to find out your birth sign and your moon sign and what your planets are. Well, how do you do that? Uh, don't trust most internet astrology sites. Uh, they're probably going to give you the Western astrology. Use Stellarium or another astrology app or astronomy app and start by entering your birth date, time, and location. Then you map out what constellation the sun is in. This is your sun sign. You can use the mobile version of Stellarium, but the desktop version will give you more accurate coordinates for this. Do the same thing with the moon and all the other planets. Find out which planets lie in which crosses, decipher what that means for you, either through Levette's videos or through personal research, and keep an eye out for astrolog astrological events that will be significant for you. That's how you pick up your cross. Alright you guys, thanks for tuning in. I uh, really hope this has been immensely helpful towards understanding Levette's teachings. I have more videos in the works, not necessarily over astrology, since Levette has more than enough videos for you to sink your teeth into. Uh, I think I'll make this my casual channel. Uh, just me waxing poetic about religion and philosophy. 
and stuff like that. I'll be opening up another channel based on my small business, which revolves around fitness and wellness. Not just physical fitness, but also mental, emotional, and spiritual fitness as well. So uh, keep an eye out for that if you're interested. Um, anyways, y'all have a great day. Thank you.